Have you turn your Bibles to Joel chapter number 2, verse number 18. Old Testament prophet. Joel chapter 2, number 18. Verse number 18 began reading. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. The Israelites, come on and read. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you corn, uh -huh. wine, and oil. My Lord. And ye shall be satisfied therewith. Mm -hmm. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. They had messed up. But God is saying that I'm going to have mercy. Come on and read. But I will remove far off mm -hmm. from you the northern army mm -hmm. and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. My Lord. With his face toward the east sea mm -hmm. and his hinder parts toward the utmost sea. Come on. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up uh -huh. because he hath done great things. I'm going to deal with those that were opposing you. Come on and read. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great Thing. The Lord will do great things. Amen. Don't fear. Don't be concerned. You may be out there right now, but God of mercy is showing up. Come on and read. Be not afraid, uh -huh. ye beast of the field. Uh -huh. For the pasture of the wilderness do spring. Mm -hmm. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Come on and read. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, mm -hmm. and rejoice in the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. My Lord. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Come on, you're going to need some things that help you to grow. You're going to need some things that help you out. I'm going to cause the former and the latter. I'm going to take care of you. Come on. Your situation may have looked bleak before now, but it's not over. Come on and read. And the floor shall be full of wheat. Come on. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It's a blessed thing when somebody was out there, when somebody's life was messed up, and God said, that's not going to end up being your plight. My God. You're not going to just end up like that. It may have been like that back in the day because of what you did. You may be out there, but God is saying, I'm about to turn some things around in your life. You've been going through a dark season. You've been going through a difficult period, but I'm showing up now, amen, and I'm going to change your situation, amen. You might have done some things that got off track. You might have backslid. You might have whatever, but that's not going to be the end of your story. That's not going to be your epitaph on your gravestone. That is going to be a small page, amen, Man, in your book called life, amen. But anybody that's reading your story, if they stop reading right there, they won't read your whole story. They have to keep going, keep reading, because my story didn't end on that page. Come on and read, brother. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have. And I'm going to restore, I'm not just going to forgive, amen, but I'm going to restore some things, my amen. God, my God. I'm not just going to make you better, amen. I'm going to go and deal with some things you my lost, Lord, amen. I'm going to restore some things, amen. amen. Come on and read, Brother Frank. I won't get at it myself. Yes, sir. And I'll restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The days. My, the years. The moments. The years. Amen. I'm my thankful God. that God is a God of great mercy. My amen. Lord. Some of us has gone off for a moment, but some of us have lost some years, amen. My God. And the devil say it's over for you. The devil say there's no hope for you. Amen. But God is saying, I'm going to restore some years, amen. My Don't God. give up on nobody, saints. Amen. Don't give up on your children, amen. Don't give up, amen, on your uh, relatives, amen. It may appear that their situation is so dark. It may appear that their situation is so bleak. They've been out there for so long. But thank God, God is a God of mercy that he can restore years. You say, Brother Lee, how in the world can he restore years? They, they backslid and their children already then grew up. Their children should have been in Sunday school, but they were Listen, I can't explain to you all that God can do and how he'll do it. All I know is the Bible said that he'll restore the years, the years that the locusts have eaten. Come on and read, but Frank. And I'll restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, uh -huh. the canker worm and the caterpillar, come on. and the palmer worm. Now, like each, one of, them, each one of them would come, and they would. one of them would uh, uh, take a certain portion, then another one.
another one would follow and they would eat up a little bit more that they left behind. Then another one would follow and they'd eat up whatever that one left behind. That's kind of how sin is. Amen. What, what, what your teenage years, what the devil don't get from you in your teenage years, he'll come in your 20s. That's right. He'll come in your 20s and say, okay, you kind of kept, you didn't go into this, that, and the other in your teenage years, but I got the 20 and I'm going to get you. Whatever your 20s don't get. Amen. Whatever he don't get from you in your 20s, then he's going to try to come around in your 30s and see what he can get. If, if, if anything was left over, but he says, I'm going to restore with every single element of everything that was ever taken from you. I'm coming back to restore it. My God. Come on, Reba, Frank. My God. And you shall eat in plenty. And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. Come on, you're not going to be starving. And praise the name of your God. Come on, yes. That has dwelt wondrously with you. Mm -hmm. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am the midst, am in the midst of Israel. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And I am the Lord your God. And none else. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Praise and my people shall never be ashamed. One of the most important and merciful aspects of God. We love the fact that he forgives. Especially after we've all done so much. It's a blessed aspect of God that he's a forgiving God. Some people, it's hard for them to forgive. But I'm thankful that God is a God that will completely forgive. And even as the lesson was going the other night when we were studying on how far does forgiveness go? And we were studying it out as a congregation because we all have relationships. We're all going to go through things. We're all going to offend each other or be offended by something somebody did. So the other night we stopped the whole service and we said we're going to deal with tonight in the Bible. How far does forgiveness go? And each person was able to add some tremendous insights on how far forgiveness actually goes. Some people have gone through difficult things in their home. Some things some had gone through difficult things in their marriage. One came after church and said, Brother Lee, my father has done some things to me. How can I? How far do I have to keep allowing him to hurt me? How far should this go? Another one came up, Brother Lee, I'm dealing with this, that, and the other. Do I really have to be in their company again after they did me so low? So we were dealing with how far does forgiveness go? One, one person said, okay, if you forgive a person, do you keep bringing it up? Or do you forget about it? And you let it go. And you don't bring it up again. Another brought up, well, in the Bible it says they forgave. But the Apostle Paul didn't forget some things. But others were saying, but no, if you really forgive them, you're not going to keep bringing it up. And you'll forgive them and give them a chance to recover themselves. Well, here the Bible speaks about an aspect of God. It's forgiveness. And you say, how far does his forgiveness go? Well, the Bible said, if he did a geographical location, he could have said from Babylon to Samaria. On, or he could have said from Los Angeles to Memphis. That's a long way. Or he could have said from L.A. to New York. On, That's a long right, way. All right, all right. Or he could have, he could have said from Hawaii right. all the way to London. My Lord. That's a long, long, you got to travel a long time to get back to the States. Then you got to cross the states, then you get across the Atlantic, then you finally come to London. That's a long way. But God said, just so they will understand how far my forgiveness goes, I cannot put a geographical location on it and then think of the farthest place on earth and say, There, no, I can't do that. But He just simply said, directionally, He said, As far as the east is from the west, so far. Have I removed your sins from you? My I'm God. thankful that God is not man. My I'm Lord. thankful God is not human. Humans will bring stuff back up and put it in your face. But on that great judgment day, when you say, God, I'm sorry. God, I've done this. God, I've done that. He's going to say, every time I look at your sin, every time I look over your life, I see a bunch of red stuff, blood and out stuff. I can't see through it. What's that red stuff? That red stuff is the blood. What shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood, the blood of 
Jesus. My God, my God. As far as the east is from the west. All right. He's going to say, what sins are you talking about? What sins are you? I'm sorry I got high. I don't remember you getting high. I'm sorry I smoked weed. I don't remember you smoking weed. I'm sorry I cheated on my wife. I don't remember you cheating on your wife. So I'm thankful for the forgiveness of God. Because we've done some stuff, saints. We may be real clean now looking sophisticated and spiritual. But my God, my God, my Lord. if he would roll back the curtain and put on this screen right here, take that flower down, take that, just make that, that wall a screen and just play your life over it. Half of the people in here start walking out. My God. So I want them saying that. That was you. And let him show our hearts too. Wow, that, that was you. Do you felt that darkness was you? That evil, you that, 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 that spirit, that was you? My God. But he said, Hallelujah. as far as east is. So we're thankful that God is a forgiving God. We're also thankful and we love the fact that God is a deliverer. Because every time you commit sin, man, you get involved with the spirit of that sin. You know, you, 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 you just not, that's why some doors ain't good to open. They say, man, try this, try that. We live in a sexually confused world now. Saints, it's amazing that just anything goes now. But a lot of this stuff is promoted by a spirit. That's right. It's certain spirits. See, the, what the devil wants to do is he want to slam you in, lock you up so he can throw away the key and he can just deal with other folk because you so far bound up. You open the door for some stuff you should have never opened the door for. So he really ain't got to worry about you. You so far deeply involved with spirits. My God, you can go to all the classes you want to go to and you can take AA and all this other stuff. But he knows that unless you get a hold of some truth, with some folk, with some power, you ain't hardly, you can get tired of it, sick. I hate being this way. I hate being this way. But oh, that spirit is stronger than I. So we're thankful that God is a deliverer that even if you get involved, that you don't have to stay there. That God can deliver you no matter what you bound by. God has the power to deliver, to break the chains, to loose you and let you go free. The Bible said whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So we're thankful that he's a deliverer. But we also are thankful Thankful that he grants power. Even after a person gets saved, amen, our mind is changed, so on and so forth. We're delivered. But saints of God, those spirits ain't going to just stay away. <laughs> we got to have some power. Amen. Some real power. Man. Listen, you may say, nope, all I'm going to do is go to church. You can, you're going to need power to go to church to deal with church folk. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to need some power. You're thinking it's going to be the club, the, the, uh, uh, the bar. It's going to be this vaping stuff they doing. No, you need power to keep your spirit right. You say, Billy, nope, all I'm going to do is go to church. I'm going to work in the kitchen. <laughs> you need power to work back there in that kitchen. You're dealing with folk in line. After you told them, y'all can't take nothing to go. You think they're going to listen to you? They're going to come right as soon as you, I understand, I, can I get something to go? And then if you say, I'm sorry, as soon as you say your lips, I'm sorry, they're going to look at you, they're going to give you one of them looks. You know how folk can get sanctified, sanctified folk, well, claiming folk can give you a look. Yeah. My, and you're going to have power not to look back because you do got a knife and a fork. You got all this stuff right here in front of you. You got all this stuff in front of you. You must run. No, no, you need power. So we're thankful, saints, that we got power because you could be saved and sanctified, but if you have no power in your home, you're going to end up fighting. You're going to end up getting to it on your job. Why? Because you ain't got the power to deal with these spirits. Oh, lust and spirits come back. You're going to end up failing. But thank God, God gives power. So he said as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God. So we see God is a forgiving God. He's, de he's a deliverer and he grants power. But saints, one of the greatest attributes of God is that God is a God of restoration. Saints, restoration is like double mercy. Mm. Mm. Let me say that again, saints. My God. Pray for us this morning. Restoration is like double mercy. It took great mercy the first time. 
to pull you up out of what you was in, you didn't deserve it. You've done some stuff you shouldn't have done. But in mercy, God had to go and he had to wait patiently for you to get your mind together. You should have been right, but he had to wait on you. Then he had to roll his sleeves up. Right. You was down in the muck and mire. Yes. God had to roll his sleeves up to just get you up out of there. He had to change your heart, change your mind. He had to deliver and forgive as we all just spoke. He had to put a new song in you. He had to put, put your feet up on solid ground. He had to show you how to walk, show you how to talk, show you how to act. He had to hold your hand. He had to hold you up. After he did all of that, the enemy still got in. And many other folk didn't never receive what you had. So God could have just said, you know what? You're done. I'm done with you. But can you imagine? Come on. The love of God to see after you messed up and ruined. See, some parents that raise you, but if you ever mess up, hit the door. You on your own. After I did all I could, took you to school, did this for you, did that for you, this, that, and the other, you gonna mess all that up? You know what? Go on about your business. Now you're gonna end up out there living on somebody's couch. You're gonna be you end up just out there doing whatever, trying to make ends meet, this, that, and the other. And you know what, man, there's something I'm seriously, they'll sit there and be like, no, you knew better. Come back home, hungry, your stomach sunk in, knocking on the door, it's raining. Mama, daddy, daddy, mama, mama, daddy, daddy. I know y'all in there, I see y'all cry, mama. You knew better. And the husband in the room, the, the mother heard the first knock. Honey, honey, you know y'all. Honey, go to it. Honey, answer the door. Honey, honey, please. Babe, no, 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 no. No, he knew better. He knew better. I'm sorry. He gonna learn his lesson. He knew better. He figured out. Daddy, mama, I promise, I No, no, no. No, he suck his chest out. I'm, I'm grown. Huh? Be grown. Go ahead. You're going to find out how grown you are. Go ahead. But saints, God in mercy see those of us that had messed up, that he had blessed, messed up again, came back down. And he told the prophet, told them in verse 25, he says, I shouldn't have mercy. But now he says, I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten. Saints, it's not just that he said, I'll forgive you. You got to see this this morning. He's not just saying, I'll forgive you. He's not just saying, I'll welcome you back. That would have been enough. That would have been awesome. But here he said, I'm going beyond that. I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. I'll restore what you have had taken from you. I'll restore you completely. The word this morning, I want to preach on the process of being restored. The process. Pray for us this morning, saints. Heavy burden. What God is doing, he's bringing back. We want those, amen, to come back, but just not just come back to the building. But there's a process. There's a part that God plays, but there's a part that we play. Process means a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. A series of action. Many people aren't restored because they don't follow this process this morning. Restored means to return someone or something to a former condition, place, or position. To repair or renovate so as to return to its original condition. There are some men that are in the process of restoring automobiles. They don't just put any parts on the automobile, but they find the originals. And they go as far as they have to go to find the originals. 
and they put those original parts back into the automobile. But God is far more sophisticated than that. Amen. God can restore completely. But as God is moving, especially in these end times, as we preached even on first day of the first Sunday, the year of restoration, and how God is bringing back, and he's just beginning. But saints, we don't want to stop short of the process being fully restored. This process can take place individually. It can take place congregationally. It can take place as a church at large. If there was ever anything that was taken, you can never, I can never, we can never relax or begin to pat ourselves on the back until there's a fullness of restoration. It has to be full and complete in order to have God's approval. An individual cannot just come back, but that process must be complete, and it can be, and God can help us do the work. The first aspect is a person must come back clean. Go back to verse number 13. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. He said, rend your heart and not your garment and return, be sincere. You have to be sincere and you got to be thorough. Saying, Lord, I want to come. I don't care what your situation is today. If you want to come back to God, you can come back. Amen. And God can restore the years of locust that eat. You may say, I left my children out there. But God can restore your children, amen. My God Lord. can restore the things you've lost. God can restore whatever the enemy has taken. But you got to come back completely. you got to come back sincerely. You say, Brother Lee, I've lost my joy. God can restore your joy for real. God can restore the power that you had for real, but you got to come back for real. You cannot come back partially. You cannot come back halfway. You got to come back genuinely. That's why we never try to push anybody and, and force anybody and say, you got to come back. No, 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 no. You got to come back in your heart. You got to pay the full price. You can't come back halfway. You can't come back 80%, but you got to come back genuinely deep within your heart, deep within your mind. You got to say, Lord, I'm sorry. The Bible said broken and contrite and godly sorrow. Lord, I'm sorry. Many people in jail, they never get fully saved. Why? Because they get what's called jailhouse salvation. They are sorry they got caught. They are sorry they're in jail. They are sorry they're about to go to prison. But my God, God says, I appreciate that, but I need you to be sorry for what you did to me. I need you to be sorry for your sins. I need you to be sorry for what you've done to me. Amen. So in order for a person to receive restoration, they have to come back with sincerity, brokenness, and contrition. Yeah. Thoroughly saying, Lord, go to Psalms 51. Let's look at David. Psalms 51, David's restoration. Psalms 51. The process of being restored. As God is moving, as God is blessing, we don't want to relax. We want to live, give hope to those that are yet desiring to come back. Today, today could be your day. Today could be your day. I don't my care God. how long you've been out God. there. Amen. I don't care how long you've been out there. My God thinks last Sunday somebody been out there over 25 years. Come back to God. Amen. So God does not doesn't matter how many years God is able to restore. David had messed up. And here he's now... Psalm 51 is dealing with his restoration. Come on and read. Have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness. Don't come with God with pride. Don't come, my God, thinking you're somebody. Don't come thinking I wasn't that bad. Just come and cry for God's mercy. My God, Lord, just have mercy upon me. Have, I'm not trying to say I didn't do too much. I did. If you did one thing, you did too much. My God, you just got to come and cry for mercy. You just saying, Lord, have mercy. That's how you can tell somebody about to get a breakthrough. They come sincere and they just saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, just have mercy. Just have, I'm done, God. Have mercy. Have, I'm not sitting there talking about, Lord, I never really smoked before. Lord, I was faithful. Lord, Lord I, I'm not giving you my good parts. I'm telling you, Lord, just have mercy, God. Have mercy upon me, God. Lord, I want mercy. Lord, I don't deserve this. Lord, I, I'm sorry, dear God. Have mercy upon me. I'm just throwing myself on the door of mercy. Lord, just have mercy upon me, God. Come on and read, brother. Have mercy upon me, O God. Uh-huh. According to thy loving kindness. Yes, sir. 
<coughs> According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, uh -huh. blot out my transgression. Come on and read, brother. Wash me thoroughly. Yes, yes. From mine iniquity. Yes. And cleanse me from my sin. Come on and read, brother. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Uh huh. And my sin is ever before I'm me. I'm owning it. I'm not making light of it. I'm owning it, God. I'm not coming just partially thinking that I haven't done. I'm owning it. You got to own it. You got to be sincere. You got to own it. David said, My sin is ever before me. I'm owning it. I see it, God. Nobody fought. The saints did me wrong. I don't care what the saints did, my God. I'm not blaming the saints, my God. I messed up. I did wrong. Lord, have mercy. Well, my wife's here because she was uh, being austin and she ain't do it. That's the reason why I had to cheat on her. That's why I did it. It ain't about my wife. It's not about what she did. Lord, I did messed up. I'm owning it, God. Have mercy upon me, God. Yeah. Come on and read, brother. Against thee, yes. thee only have I sinned. Against thee only have I sinned. It was your law that I defiled. Come on and read, brother. And done this evil in thy sight. Evil in thy sight. Evil. Come on and read. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. Yes. And be clear when thou judgest. Come on and read. Behold. Yes. I was shapen in iniquity. Come on and read. And in sin did my mother conceive. Read, brother. Behold. Yes. Thou desire truth in the inward part. I want to be right on the inside, God. I want to be right on the inside, dear God. Come on and read. And in the hit, in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. I don't want to just come among the saints, but I want to be a saint on the inside. I want to be thorough on the inside. Read, brother. Purge me. Purge me. With he keeps hissing. going. Purge me with Hyssop, wash me, purge me. Oh Lord, I want to be. Come on and read. And I shall be clean. Yes. Wash me. Come on. And I shall be whiter than snow. Come on, I shall be whiter than snow. There's doctrine in there. Read, brother. Make me to hear joy. Yes, and Lord. Gladness. Yes. That the bones which thou the hast bones broken, which thou has broken may rejoice. He's being thorough in this. He's not playing games. Saints, it's a beautiful sight to see someone come back to God and they come back the right way. They come back with humility. They come back with brokenness. They're not saying y'all should be happy I'm back. Y'all need to do this for me. Y'all need to do that for me. No, they got the mindset. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I don't have to do nothing. You ain't got to shout over me. You ain't got to put me back up. I just want to be saved. I'm humble. I just want to be, I'm the least of all the saints. I just want to be right with God. Lord, wash me thoroughly. Lord, deal with me, dear God. Father, I want to be right down in my soul. Amen. Read, brother. Hide thy face from my sins. Yes. And blot out all my iniquity. Come on and read, brother. Create in me a clean heart, O Man, God. Man, come on and read, brother. And renew a right spirit within Lord, me. Lord, my spirit is off. Lord, my spirit. Renew a right spirit, a humble spirit, a sincere spirit, a holy spirit. Lord, renew a right spirit within me, dear God. Read. Cast me not away from thine presence. Cast me not away from thy presence, Lord. Come on. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Keep dealing with me, God. Don't stop dealing with me. Some people sit in the altar call. And they'll say, if God would just leave me alone. You don't ever want to say that. You don't ever want to say that. You don't ever want to come to a service, my God, and keep pushing away conviction. And God, I don't give you saint or sinner. If God keep dealing with you on something, my God, let him deal with you. Let him humble yourself and say, Lord, I may not be ready yet, but Lord, keep dealing with me. Lord, make me feel uncomfortable every time I do something. You know better than what you're doing. You grew up in the church. You shouldn't be down at the post. You shouldn't be down, my God, at the foundry. You shouldn't be down at the club. You shouldn't be at no firecracker casino. No, you shouldn't be doing that foolishness, my God. You should feel bad every time you walk in there. Every time you say, uh, what I got, 18? Give me one more hit. You should feel bad every time you say, give me another hit. Every time, my God, you up here, my God, pour some liquor or pour me a cup. You knew. You grew up in truth. You knew the body is the temple of God. You shouldn't be putting that stuff in your body. You should feel bad every time, my God. Every time, my God, you pull up the, my God, the hotel and you get that card and you put that swipe in and you go into that hotel with that person that you have not given vows to. You knew better than that. You knew you shouldn't be laying down. That's called fornication or adultery. It's one or the other. You shouldn't be doing it. You should feel bad every time you do it. You shouldn't say, oh, uh, 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 leave me alone, God. I, uh, no. The person should say, why, why are you twitching? Why do you feel that? Uh, you understand. I know better than what I'm doing. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be involved in this. I don't understand. They, they don't understand. Why do you feel like, why can't you enjoy the club? Why can't you just dance with us? Why can't you just dance to Jeezy or, or Beyonce or whoever else it is? Why can't you just get down? Why why? Because in the back of my mind, I hear the evening light songs ringing. I hear brighter days. I sweet.
completely dawning. Oh, the glory. I hear it. I hear it. Be an overcomer. Only coward shield. I hear it. You need to say, Lord, keep dealing with me. Lord, don't push that away. Lord, let me feel that, my God, until I come home. Yes. Come on and read, brother. Lord, cast me not away from thine presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yes, sir. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Come on. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Yes, sir. Read. Then will I teach transgressors thy way. I labor for you, Lord. And sinners shall read. be converted unto thee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Deliver Lord, I labor for you, Lord. You don't need a position to labor. Yes. You don't God. need a title to labor. That's the problem I got. Folk want titles, but they don't want to labor. Hey, Amen. You don't need no, can't nobody, boy, they, don't, they, they ain't letting me, they block you. Can't, this is a church of God. Can't nobody block you. My God, do what you do. Let the Holy Ghost fall on you. Let the, get a heavier anointing, my God. People will jump over folk to get to you. You ain't got to worry about that, my God. Let your, amen, uh, 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 title catch up with your anointing. Amen. Amen. Brother Henry said one time, he said, oh, no, you ain't got to get them. He said, man, there's three corners all over America. My God. He said, you get, you get, people usually get upset when they want to do something inside the church or they want some inside recognition. But that's always dangerous. Anybody that really, really labored, that's the last thing. I ain't worried about you recognizing me. I ain't worried about you, 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 you giving me this. You giving me, I want this class, and I want, but no, 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 no. Anybody you ever see mightily used? They, they, they create stuff. They, 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 they were sweeping stuff in the corners. They, were, they, they didn't want to. They, they, they denied it when it came. When, they, when it came their time, they was like, no, no. They sensed the gravity of it. They didn't want it. No, 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 no. But the Hampton said, be more in private than you are in public. My then he God. said, you're going to give an account for every time you open your mouth. Then he said, don't preach beyond. Don't teach beyond what you're able to produce yourself. That's right. My God, my God. I mean, this stuff just caused a weight over your fear. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, he, he, he would say something. He said, I got many messages I can't preach. I got to deal with them first. Showing you the gravity of it. So here he said, hey, Lord, if you bless me, I'll labor for you. I'll go and do a work for you. I'll tell you about my job. I'll bring people to church. My God, my God. For saints, uh, 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 I can't work an altar, but I won't leave my seat until the altar is all done. Oh, my, where those saints at? Where, where that church at? My God, my God. No, you ain't asking me to come pray for the altar. I can pray from there or here, and it's the same power. Amen. 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 They ain't letting me up here sing. You can sing from right there and bless us. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So here he said, you bless me, I'm laboring for you, Lord. There are some people that are here this morning, saints, that God has an assignment for. There's something that only they can do. And that's the worst part. That's one of the worst parts about their salvation. Not only are they out there in sin, but they're not where they're supposed to be. All right. All the souls that are being impacted. They're children. The devil got a certain access to them because their intercessor is not there to block it. So there's a way that their children are going through right now. Their siblings are going through right now. Those that they love are going through right now. Why? Because they're being so selfish. And then they will tell you stuff like, I'm not even happy. You out there being selfish, involved in the sin, not even happy, but you won't give your stuff to God so you can labor for God and he can fill you and restore the joy of your salvation? Wow. Wow. So we see here that a person must come clean. Number two, they must identify the cause that caused them to backslide in the first place. Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28, 13. They must identify the cause. And let me say it like this. What people, what you see people leave over is not the issue. Oftentimes, that's not the issue. What you hear, so and so, by the time you see them stop coming, it was something way before that. It was way, like a marriage. They didn't get that divorce at their court. Right. They had already separated a long time before. They're probably sleeping in separate rooms. Probably no more communication. Probably involved with other relationships. It's the same way when someone backslides. But in order to come back thoroughly, you got to identify. What took me out? Proverbs 28, 13, read. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. One way people cover their sins is with religious affiliation. That's you right. ask him, are you saved? Well, I go to Bishop so-and-so church. I didn't ask you that. Are you saved? Well, I got baptized five years ago, and I got my baptism card right here. I, I'm not asking you that. Are you saved from sin? 
Well, uh, 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 my bishop told me, and I, and I give my offer. That, you're trying to cover your sin up. You ain't going to prosper. He that covered the sin shall not prosper. Many times individuals, they end up coming back. He said, what happened? Well, uh, uh, the saints talked about my mama, and then uh, and I got upset about... No, no, no. You know, you, you also covered by not calling it what it was. You covered it up with that. That wasn't your issue. Well, my wife... Uh, that wasn't your issue. Well, they overlooked me, and they didn't... That wasn't your issue. You would never, ever get fully restored unless you acknowledge what took you out here in the first place. You come back, you so excited, this, that, and the other. That's, uh, the saints rejoicing. You need to go home and stay before God. Listen. Before you get up taking over the services and this, that, and the other. Stay on your face before God. Examining yourself. What took me out of here? What happened for real? What ended up, what, what was it for real? What, 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 what worked on me for real? What caught, listen, the devil don't have a knockout blow. Follow where I'm going with this. Anybody that grew up in the 80s and uh, 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 in late night, they knew about a guy named Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson was a heavyweight champ. He was the youngest one I think ever. He, he could, he, well, in his, they had a video game called Tyson Punch Out. And they had guys you could play. If you weren't that good, you play against Glass Joe. Glass Joe had a glass jaw. In other words, a glass jaw means you ain't got to do much to knock them out. Some people got spiritual glass jaws. Right. It don't take much for the devil to knock them out. But each one, it goes further and further and further until you get to the end where you face somebody that's really, 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 really strong and tough. Well, no matter who you fought, from glass Joe to the end, you could never, even you were Mike Tyson, you could never go into the match and just say, knock out. It wouldn't work. You had to do body blow, body blow, body blow, body blow, jab, jab, uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. Then it would go from blue, green, orange. Then it's getting red, red, red. Once you get red, start flashing. Knock out, knock out, knock out, knock out. You've worked them down enough. Now you can hit, hold the two, go to the side, hit that at the same time that you hit C. C, side. Bam! Oh, and they fall. Ooh. That's kind of how the devil is. He's got the body blow, body blow, body blow, miss devotion, get upset. You, you, you just dealt with something that you should have just prayed, let that thing on the altar. But now you've used so much virtue dealing with something you should have just already dealt with. So now you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. And now you're missing the, you ain't got the joy you used to have. Now you're dealing with this. You're spending all your phone calls. Issue. Issue. Now you're dealing with this. Now you're dealing with this. You ain't fasting like you should. Now you did now you, now you weak. Now you, devil. Knock out. Knock demons. Demons. Knock out. Knock out. Knock out. Bam. But that wasn't it. What started it? Was it bitterness? Something happened. You let that thing go too deep. Was it? Samson? What knocked him out? Torn with the forbidden. He, he knew he shouldn't have been. Come on. Come on. Sit on my lap. Come on. Let me. Come on. It's okay. Samson, you know I love you. Show me where your strength lies. Show me where. where, where, where what? what? Uh, well, if you tie my, if you braid my hair, uh, if you, uh, if you, my God, what happened? Toying with the forbidden. My God. Messing with something. That's right. Lord, I need the victory of toying with the forbidden. There's something in me that enjoys. See, there, there's something, saints, you have to understand it. Pray for me. Only a little bit of time, but a long way to go. Pray for me this morning. Say, Robert, we won't have full recoveries if we don't have this message. So there, 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 there's, there's, there's like some, some um, animals, they won't mess with a dead animal. But if they they need a they need a challenge, right? They 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 like to play cat and mouse. That cat will just let that mouse run so far, then go back and hit him. Wow, yeah. And then go back and play, then go back in, hit him again. 
See, some people, they just like to play cat and mouse. My God, man. Toying with something. But then they, put, they jump back. They toy with it again. Then they jump back. And they toy with it again. But here, Samson was toying with the forbidden. You say, what happened to David? It said at a time when kings was supposed to be in battle, he tarried still in Jerusalem. What happened? Wrong place. You wasn't where you should have been. Let me say it back up. You were somewhere you shouldn't have been. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Somewhere, many people who fell, many times it was somewhere they shouldn't have been in the first place. Or you wasn't somewhere, which was really the bigger issue. We focus on he was he 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 was wrong place, wrong time. No, no, no. He wasn't in the right place. See what happens sometimes when people have spiritual failures? What? They end up, they're not somewhere in God. They're not where they should be in God. They, 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 they're not deep enough in God. They should be higher in God. They should have been on another level, but they got weak. They got busy. The cares of life. They got busy with something. And they wasn't where they should have been. Right, brothers. You should have been way past that. You should have been deeper with God. You were supposed to be on your faith. How was your prayer life? How was your fast life? It was weak. Oh, five minutes a day prayers you was doing. You doing everything else. You wasn't where you should have been. That was your issue. You got to get on your face before God. That lukewarm spirit, the cares of life, that worldly spirit that you got. My God. Is what took you out of here. So you got to be like, hold on. I don't care if everybody in this building come late to church. I won't. Yeah. Right? The Bible said don't. Forsaking not the assembly. They say part of it. They said don't forsake the assemblies. Yes. No. This is God's time of the week. This and the other. I'm consecrating that. So I'm here. But what happens? If you look around, that's what Laodicea is about. You look around you. And you see what other people are doing. They ain't fasting. They don't testify. They come late. They leave early. They do this. They do. I'm not following. They're not my example. Jesus is. The old saints, they ain't never do the stuff we see in the day. Never, never, never. Early and stayed late to the last person left. They just right there just digging. Digging. But what happens? What happens? Many people end up messing up and they end up trying to get back right. But they don't deal with what took them out the first time. So they come back for a period of time. You got to deal with, and let me say, you got to deal with it thoroughly. When David, my God, dealt with uh, uh, Goliath, he knocked him, bam, with a rock. Bam. But he didn't stop there. He said, oh no, oh no. Ran up on him, took his sword out. Stood up on top of him, sliced his head off. Sure. And said, what? I don't want him getting up later. Come on, brother. I'm cutting the head off this thing. I'm going to locate what took me out before, and I'm not going to stop until I deal. And sometimes it wasn't some external. It might have been something inside you. Right. It might have been something you was dealing with. It might have been something that, was, that you never really cut the head off that thing. It might have been the spirit that you really had, my God. And let me say this, saints. When people don't cut the head off the stuff that they need to or don't identify what they need to identify, you know what? It comes back. Yes. Most people that don't do what we're preaching this morning, yes. they end up having the same issue six months later, wow. two years later, right. five years. Well, if you see what happened to so and so, if you go back far enough, something similar probably happened before. Yeah. Something similar. That's why some people even relocate. They say, Well, I'm dealing with this issue, I'm going to relocate. I'm going to move over here. Go ahead. Until you deal with you. Right. Whatever you dealt with here, you're going to end up dealing with It's going to show its head again. Right. It's going to pop back up. I've been in it long enough. I've seen it. Your issue is not the people that are surrounding you. Your issue is you. Right. You got to say, Lord, hold on. Hold on. I don't. I, I want to make sure this, that, and the other. Now, we know you can go through difficult periods. And we're not talking about that. You can go through difficult situations, this, that, and the other. But your bottom line, your mindset's got to be, I'm making sure this is not. Well, how do I know? You should really give me a practical example. Divorce. Yeah. You ever seen somebody married eight, nine times, three, five, four times, five times? That same spirit. They, 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 they real nice during a honeymoon period. Then just pop back up. That same spirit they had before. But if you want to be fully restored, you got to identify, hold on, what happened? You know what it is? I'm, I, my, my, my spiritual skin is too thin. 
it was me. S stuff can get me. Right. Stuff can hurt me too easy. I take things too far. I deal with too much. Hold on. I, I, hold on. Lord, unless I thicken my sin up, unless I get something down in my soul, some spiritual resistance, my spiritual resistance is just too low. I need more power. I need more inspiration. I need my spiritual resistance to be stronger. Lord, give me a, a, a thicker skin. Lord, put take some sandpaper and rough my skin up. My skin is just too sensitive. If I just go outside and work on some tools, I get blisters. Lord, give me some thicker skin, my God. When I go through with my child, when I go through in the church, when I go through at home, when I go through with my wife, Lord, I don't want to have another failure. Lord, I don't want to have to keep asking my wife to forgive me. Just Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Lord, no. I got to be able to take more. I can't take enough. Amen. Go over to Hosea 7.16. Hosea 7.16 Process of being restored Process of being restored You gotta come back clean You gotta identify the cause And you gotta come back to the greatest lights you've ever had Hosea 7.16 We're not talking about no partial restorations We don't want to rejoice over false victories Hosea 7.16 They return They return But not to the most high But not to the most high They are like a deceitful boat Hold on They came back for in Israel, straight, they came back out of trouble, sought the Lord. They came back, but not to the most high. They didn't fully line up with the law. They didn't fully deal with every single idolatrous way in the camp. They came back, but they didn't come back to the most high. See, you don't have the luxury of backsliding and then coming back and coming back to a certain extent. You ain't no baby. <laughs> you ain't no little child. You gotta come back to the greatest light that God has ever shown you. You cannot rest until you have come back and reclaimed all the, the light that you had before. You cannot come back. Hold on. What you got on? Well, you know, but I just paid a whole bunch of money to get these done, these fakes, a whole bunch of money to get these done. So I'm just going to just let these wear itself out. And then once they wear it out, I'm just not going to re-up. So I, just, I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm just, I'm, I'm saved. I'm real good. <laughs> so my Sunday school teacher who taught me on modesty, you, you, listen. If you gotta go get some pliers, <laughs> you go get go find go go find some pliers, some vice grips. Find, find one, find, find you something to not identify with the world. Man. Your mindset should be one person. They said they, I knew they was gonna get a breakthrough because they were sitting in a seat while the gospel was going forth. They start. <laughs> By the time they get up to the altar, <laughs> whoa. They ain't playing no games. Whoa. Hold on. Who, 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 who? You still. Who'd you talk? Oh, my boyfriend dropped me. The Bible said don't be unequally yoked. No. No. I come to God. I'm done. I'm done. And, and, and listen, God is not a respected person. We had to do what you do too. You ain't no different than nobody. And let me go a step further since you want to look at me that way. Go out there and get you somebody else. Listen. Go ahead and you think you're going to come back up in here and sit here with somebody else and you knew better. You taught me. Say what you want to say. The Bible still say it's one for life. You taught me. You had understand. You had life. You taught me. You want to go out there, do your own thing, then come back up here and make us swallow it. No, nay, not. And it ain't about us. It's about you getting right with God. You got to get clear with God. Right now. That's the Bible. This ain't about me. Don't say it. I got to please Brother Lee. It ain't about Brother Lee. Oh, no. But Lee, he but Lee going to change the church. I can't change the church. The church is already established on Mount, on Mount Zion. Amen. Yeah. Said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah. And about no man. Yeah. Amen, my guy. It's the same. And you say, oh, it's a new day. Ain't no new day. He's the same. Yeah. Thank God. This ain't no joke. You can't just go do what you want to do and this, that, and the other and just come back. No. Many people don't come back correct. So there's a power that they never have. There's an authority that they never have. But you come back, you got to come back to the greatest light that you've ever seen before in your life. This is no joke. This is no plaything. We're not talking about being acceptable with man. We talk about being acceptable with God. Amen. 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 I appreciate my God, one of the sisters. This came. This guy began to deal with her. I said, whoa. Whoa. The one I got ain't mine. 
Right. Hold on. Devil tell you you'll be by yourself. Who's going to pay? You say, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I'm going to have to trust God for that. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to sit here condemned in the pew and then condemned in the judgment, hoping that he winks at, oh, his days of winking is over. First Samuel 30, we're done almost. First Samuel 30, I know you're happy. I'm almost done. First Samuel 30. First Samuel 30. You got to be restored. Amen. Amen. The process of restor restoration got to be complete. Amen. It's got to be complete. We got to come back to the greatest light. Amen. You know what it means to be sanctified. Here you are taking a year. Whoa, what in the world is that? You knew what sanctification is. You come back. And it's six, eight, nine, ten months later. You don't pray for me that I get sanctified. You taught on this. You had to chart up and everything else. No. You got to ride the Oh, Lord, sanctify me. Lord, burn me up. Come on and read. First Samuel 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag mm -hmm. on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south mm -hmm. in Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Come on. And had taken the women captive mm -hmm. that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. My Lord. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. Mm -hmm. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. So David messed up. He should have left those to protect the city while they went to battle. He didn't. They came back to the city and all all their valuables was taken. So David, in verse number nine. So David went, uh -huh. he and the 600 men that were with him, uh -huh. and came to the brook Besor, uh -huh. where those that were left behind stayed. My Lord. But David pursued. Uh -huh. He had 400 men. Come on. For 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook. Great, brother. And they found an Egyptian in the land field. Skip down to verse number 16. So David went after. David went after. In verse number 8 it said, And David inquired of the Lord, said, Shall I pursue after this true? Those that took all that he had valuable. Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, the Lord answered him and said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail thou shalt recover all. Amen. God said, Amen. Go on after it. You might have messed up. You left the city unprotected. Amen. But you sought me. You came honestly and correctly. Amen. He said, You go ahead over it. You're going to recover, and you're going to recover all. Some of the best, my God, talent we have spiritually is out there in the streets of Jackson. My God. Some of those that know my God, the church God, like the uh, what it teaches, the word of God that's sitting uh, out there, my God. Amen. Some of the saints are sitting here, amen, today by themselves. They weren't always by themselves. They had husbands, my God, that could pray the prayer of faith, that taught Sunday school. They had husbands, amen, that went on missionary trips all over the world with Brother Hampton and the other brethren. They had husbands that prayed, my God, for saints that you see right now that are healed, but my God, some type of way the devil came in. The devil, my God, tricked them. The devil got them out there. Some type of way, my God, the devil got a blow in on them. So they're out there, my God. Some of the people that you see singing for some of these functions around town, that you see some of them, my God, amen, they know better. They're some of the most gifted musicians, my God. Some people you know that are playing church around this community, involved in choirs, some of them in pulpits, they know better than what they're doing. They know the way. They know you got to live free from sin. They know you got to be sanctified. They know about modest apparel. They know no man should be dressed like a woman, and a woman shouldn't dress like a man. They know you shouldn't be uh, playing a lottery, calling yourself a Christian. You shouldn't be calling it, using the Lord's name in vain on Friday, but then saying blessed quietness on Sunday morning. They know you can't serve two masters. They know better. They know better. But the devil has got in. But we don't have to give up on them, saints. Amen. We have to get a burden for them, my God, because God is saying, amen, amen. If they come back and they come back correctly, he says you're going to go and you're going to recover all. You're going to get back everything. My but God, you got to come Lord, back the Lord. right way. He said, David, go after what you had my before. God. Come on, Brother Frank. Let's close it out. And when he had brought him down, yes, sir. Behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth. Come on, when he eating brought him down, and, eating and drinking, they were partying. They said, "We got them. We took their belongings." They were partying with their stuff. Oh, but David was about to bust up the party. Come on and read. Eating and drinking and dancing yes. because of all the great spoil they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. Amen. The devil is is throwing a party. Amen. Rejoicing. Amen. I got that 
same. I took that same back. I, 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 I messed their marriage up. Look at them. They getting high with their children now. Look at them. I got them, my God. They all tw intertwined twang and messed up. Their life is all just messed up. Oh, but God came in and said, hey, man, the party about to end this morning. Hey, man, you may be partying that you messed my life up, my devil. Lord. You may be partying that you took years from me, devil. You may be partying, my God, that you had me in a lukewarm state for so long. Amen. And I'm not where I should be. I know God has taken some of the older saints back. Amen. And God needs the church to be on fire like never before right now. I know I'm not where I should be. I know I've lost some ground. I know my family prayer life is not what it should be. But devil, I'm not going to just stay here. Devil, you partying because I go to church and I'm all quiet now. I go to church and you've taken my, taken my testimony. You've taken my joy. You've taken my inspiration. I'm just going on fumes. I'm just going because I don't want to go to the world, but I know I'm not where I should be. I, I, I have a joyless experience, my God. There's a power that I don't have, and the devil is so excited. After every service that you leave, without getting everything amen, that he's taken from you, he's partying. He's excited about it, but all this morning, amen, our prayer is that the party will be busted up. Amen. Our party is that, amen, our prayer is that we'll be able to say, amen, devil, you've taken some stuff from me. You've taken some things from my experience, but devil, those days are over. Devil, I'm taking back everything you've ever stole from me, devil. I'm taking back my faith. I'm taking back my joy. I'm taking back my power. I'm taking back my place in the body of God. Devil, you've had me long enough. You've prevented me long enough. You've hindered me long enough. I will not sit here and allow you to bully me not another day. Come on and read, brother. And David smote them. And David smote them. From the twilight even until the evening. Come on, all day long. David said, I'm going upside your head. Devil, I'm smoking you all day long. I'm not going to give you one blow. I'm not going to give you two blow. But David said, I smoked them all from the twilight, from early in the morning, all the way to the evening. I don't know how he did it. Do you know how tough it is to fight? I picked up one sister for church this morning. And she was telling me, she said, brother, my son is an MMA fighter. And I said, okay, okay. Do you know how tiring fighting is? One time we were playing with one of the traveling basketball teams and we were in a place called Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that night we were at the Coliseum. So during the day, we went to schools, gave exhibitions so the children could come out that night and buy tickets. So we had some downtime between uh, us going to schools and they had boxing is real big down there at least it was at that time so we went to the boxing gym put the gloves on we asked one of the uh, one of the other guys on the team they put the gloves on so we sitting there and we just taking the gloves on first of all boxing is completely different than basketball yes <laughs> You sitting there and you trying to punch and you sitting there, you looking at the punch you want to do and you like, uh, man, but you think you quick on a hoop court. It's total different muscles. By the time you try to box one of them boxers down there and you telegraph your punch, by the time your punch gets to they way over here hitting you over here. Because they, you had a, it's, a different type, it's a different type of quickness. We, we, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, almost a reflecting quickness. So they put the gloves on, they put the timer on. I think it was on three minute rounds. After about 25 seconds of just. We didn't know how to pace ourselves. We didn't know. We didn't know how to. We just. We us basketball players are all over the. After about 25, uh, just I mean lungs burning. We still try to. Just we try to. Just, I mean just. Burn. I'm like man, to fight the energy that it takes. How in the world did David, from early in the morning. To late that night, went upside the head and just saints. You be shocked what you can do when you're under inspiration. You be shocked what you can do when you want to get something back. You be shocked what you can do, amen, when you try to get a breakthrough. You be shocked, my God, how far you can go, amen. You ever heard the person that say that man picked up that little car? 
because his son rolled up under it. You ever heard somebody like mechanic? Like, he lifted the car. Like, you can't lift no back end of a car up. Bless your son roll. You get some strength from somewhere. So David got some inspiration from somewhere. And amen. He got went upside their head all day long. But let's see what he did. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. Uh -huh. And there escaped not a man of them. And there escaped not a man. Full recovery. You can't let one escape. Come on, read. Save 400 young men which rolled upon camels and Come fled. Come on, read. And David recovered all. And David recovered all. That the Amalekites had carried away. Uh huh. And David rescued his two eyes. David recovered all. That's what God wants to do this morning. Recover everything. Come on, read. And there was nothing lacking to them. And there was nothing lacking to them. Neither small nor great. Neither small nor great. Neither son nor daughter. Neither son nor daughter. Neither spoil nor anything that they had had taken to them. Oh, David thanks. recovered all. Her prayer life, she got it back. Her fast life, she got it back. Her vision, she got it back. My God. Her faith, she got it back. Got it back, my God. Amen. Everything that he, but look at this last part. Come on and read. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before those other cattle mm -hmm. and said, this is David's spoil. Whoa. Uh, my Lord. This wasn't even his. He took what they had before they had run into them. So when you can see a restoration is complete, they actually are better than they were before. My God. Wow. Hold on, saints. We end them with this. My Lord. You say, Brother Lee, give me a practical example of that. We were in a revival in California. This is about maybe eight, ten years ago. And one of the sisters that came to the revival, she worked at a glass factory. And she was explaining in her testimony how she worked at this glass factory that had like patented this process or they had this process that if a glass broke they could take it back and they could apply this process to it, the area that was cracked. And when they apply the fusing, the strengthening, the polishing again, and they give it back, the area that was broke listen, listen. is stronger as a greater density than the rest of the whole glass. If man, all right, all right. If man, my God, can restore a my glass, Lord, my Lord, that was broken, my God, and that glass have no spiritual limp, walking around here with a limp, my walking God. around here with a spiritual crack in it, and we embarrass every time we gotta pull that glass out my to Lord. show somebody because that crack is always there. But thank God, if man, on, Amen, can restore broken glass, my God, to the point in which that glass is strong. My Lord. I don't want to discourage nobody that's never had no problems, but that glass technically is stronger than the other glasses in the cabinet that never broke. My God, my Lord. You say, Brother Lee, help me out and help me understand that. I'll help you understand that. I'm not talking about just an experience. I'm talking about once you've ever messed up, you can so get an experience that you're more watchful because of what happened. You got more insight because of what happened. You're more grateful because of what happened. You're more thankful because of what happened. My You're more God, merciful. You're more merciful Lord, because of what God, happened. You got God. more empathy because of what happened. You don't look your nose down at other people because of what happened. God has something. My he don't have to prime you and prop you to praise him because of what happened. My Lord. Yeah. My Lord. That's right. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, Brother Lee, tell me about something. I can tell you about Jonah, amen. Amen. He needed restoration. I can tell you about Samson, my God. The Bible said he killed more the second time around than he did the first time around. I can tell you about Peter, amen. He was doing some stuff, but after his restoration, he preached and thousands got saved. I can tell you about John Mark, amen, the other night. John Mark, amen. Yeah, he messed up, but my God, I never find nobody who Paul requested. Paul said, send unto me. John Mark, amen. Uh, God uh, is restoring uh, his people. Lord, God Lord. is restoring his church. Amen. But we got to come back completely. And we're going to be better than we ever was my before. Lord, my Lord. Shall we stand? My God. Send John Mark, my God. Amen. My Lord. My Lord.